Hello everyone and happy Sabbath. The month of May is slated for lupus awareness among other medical concerns. I'm Dr. Patterson and my purpose for the next few minutes is to make every listener aware of an illness called systemic lupus erythematous, otherwise known as lupus or SLE. You may be wondering why is learning about lupus important? It is important because it is a lifelong illness that can cause great disability and death if not properly identified and treated. It is predominantly found in women of African descent, such as myself, Afro-Caribbean, African-Americans, people of color. And it is not easily diagnosed. Many lupus sufferers called lupus warriors go undiagnosed and misdiagnosed for years because lupus is also known as the great masquerader. It imitates other illnesses in its presentation, leading clinicians to treat it as other illnesses. A heightened awareness of this disease makes its diagnosis more likely. It is our hope that these few minutes of information will assist in someone being diagnosed quicker, someone understanding that they are not alone and or someone knowing where to seek help. Now that I've got your attention, let's make lupus visible. SLE or lupus is an autoimmune disorder where the body attacks itself at the cellular level almost any organ system may be affected. More than 90% of cases of SLE occurring women frequently starting at childbearing age. It is a chronic inflammatory disease. It is a lifelong illness where parts of the body becomes painful, swollen, hot, and red. Its presentation in course, highly variable, ranging from mild to even fatal disease. Here on the picture on the left, we see the organs that are involved in lupus. We see the skin, the joints, the bone, kidneys, blood cells, as well as the nervous cells. In the picture on the right, these are some of the symptoms of those suffering from lupus. Blood clots in the lung, hair loss, mouth ulcers, etc. Statistics. So in Jamaica, there are over 6,000 persons who are living with lupus. If you're in the UK, you're one in 1,000, as well as in Canada, one in 1,000. The US has about 1.5 million Americans with some form of lupus. All in all, about 5 million people worldwide are lupus warriors. 90% are women and 80% develop lupus between the ages of 15 and 45. And importantly, most common in African descendants. Here in the picture on the top right, we have examples of mouth ulcers that occur in lupus. Etiology, specific cause of SLE is unknown. There are genetic predispositions as well as environmental interactions with the genes that have been identified. It is important to note that 8% of affected patients have at least one first degree family member who also suffers from lupus. A first degree family member would be your parents, your siblings, your brothers and sisters, or your children, and yes, Systemic lupus erythematous can occur in siblings, including twins. Here we see a list of the signs and symptoms that mostly occur during childhood. Most of these are seen in lab work. However, um, if you notice this child's cheeks, they are quite red and um, not only the cheeks, but it also goes across the nasal bone. 
in this other picture, we see the same malar or butterfly rash. However, the presentation is a bit different owing to the difference in um, presentation of lupus. Over here, we have the remnants of uh, discoid lupus. What we're seeing is scarring of the skin. In this slide, we see the most common signs and symptoms in the adult. The classic presentation includes fever, joint pain, and rash. Persons with lupus are highly photosensitive, meaning they have an extreme sensitivity to ultraviolet UV rays, which we get from the sun and other light sources. Lupus patients tend to get rashes on the face or extremities, which are the sun-exposed areas of the body. And in this slide, we can see the picture of those rashes. These individuals also present with extreme fatigue. A normal mother may be able to play with their children for an hour continuously. For a lupus patient, after five minutes of playing, they are just about out of energy. In the lupus world, it is called being out of spoons. If you know someone with lupus and you want to understand them better, you can Google the spoon theory and hear all about it. Fever, arthralgia or joint pain and weight changes are the most common symptoms in new cases or in flare-ups. Weight loss in patients with active disease, weight gain in those being treated with steroids, migraine headaches may be linked to a blood clotting syndrome, headache and mood disorders may be the most commonly reported neurologic manifestation of systemic lupus erythem erythematosus. The diagnosis of systemic lupus erythematosus is based on a combination of clinical findings and laboratory evidence. Familiarity with the diagnostic criteria helps clinicians to recognize the disease. Primary care doctors are asked to be familiar with the diagnostic criteria and to keep lupus in mind. The picture here shows a skin manifestation in a person of color. We can see the dark discoloration of discoid lupus, a form of lupus different from the systemic form. Discoid lupus mainly affects the skin. Here are pictures of other manifestations of discoid lupus. On the left, we see scarring on the cheek and on the right, we see discoloration of the lips. There is no cure for lupus. However, many treatments are available that can control the disease and prevent organ damage. Early and adequate treatment are important for the best result. By achieving and maintaining good control of lupus, it is possible to enjoy a full and normal life. Medications used in lupus range from NSAIDs such as ibuprofen and corticosteroids. In more severe cases, medications will include disease-modifying drugs. Some are used in certain cancer treatments. And I'd like to be very clear about this. Lupus is not a cancer. I understand that some Caribbean individuals believe it to be, but it is not. Having certain illnesses along with lupus increases a lupus warrior's tendency to become ill and may cause death. These include infections, diabetes, high blood pressure, and some cancers. Here we have a picture of swollen, painful joints on the left. Arthritis of the joints of the hands as well as the wrist is the most common musculoskeletal finding. In the middle and on the right, there are pictures of Raynaud's phenomenon, a constricting of the smaller blood vessels in the fingers 
and toes, causing them to become blue, gray, pale, and painful. It may be described as a burning sensation by some individuals. Lupus carries a highly variable prognosis for individual patients. Features of the disease vary between individuals. Lupus often wax and wane in affected persons throughout their lives. In those with kidney disease and nervous system disease, the disease tends to be more severe. Historically, lupus was associated with a reduced life expectancy. Prior to 1955, five years after being diagnosed with lupus, there would be only less than 50% alive. Currently, the average 10-year survival rate exceeds 90% and 15 is approximately 80%. On the bottom right, we see a picture of the classic uh, hair loss around the temple area. It is important that patients take their prescribed medications and follow up with their doctors. If you are a smoker, quit smoking. And due to the increased risk of problems with having a baby, it is highly recommended that lupus warriors plan their pregnancies. And finally, here are some links for further information. There are lupus foundations around the world where we can obtain further information and resources. Here we have listed the links for Jamaica, USA, Canada, and the UK. Remember, lupus presents most commonly in women of color. The classic presentation includes fever, rash, and joint pain in a woman of childbearing age. And I would add to that fatigue, tiredness as a common complaint. There is no cure for lupus. There are medications that can prolong life, but you must seek medical care. Thank you.